Harris here and welcome to part 3 of the Aston Martin DBS build. So, in the last part you've seen me paint everything, we got all 2k cleared, which sounded absolutely fantastic, very happy with that. Great feedback from everyone, thank you for everyone that's watched and commented, left feedback and uh, everyone that's watched, just thank you very much. Um, that's the reason I do these videos, people watch them, seem to enjoy them, I don't know why, <laughs> it's just me building stuff but if people want to watch it i'll make videos of it so thanks everyone that's watched left comments thumbs up left support and uh, it really is great and it's nice to see so many of you out there buying aston martin dbs's um they're a bit hard to get hold of as it is but i know of at least four people who have bought one off the back of this so it's great really is good to see um so today we're going to focus on the running gear engine suspension and the chassis as well Getting those all painted up, um, primed, painted, a lot to do, and I mean a lot to get through on this. I ended up with about three hours of footage, I'm going to try and get it down to 20 or 30 minutes if I can, so it's going to be fun to say the least. So if it misses a bit, understand why, I'm going to try and juggle getting everything in as well as showing stuff too. So there we are. So let's get to it, let's go and start and let's see where we're at. Okay, so this is where we're at today. We're going to get all the running gear done, including the suspension, brakes, uh, engine covers, the engine itself. We're going to move on to painting up the chassis, which requires some pretty awkward uh, masking and several colours being sprayed. So we've got X18 at the front and wheel arch, TS17 in the centre and body colour on the edges, as well as semi-gloss black on the front there as well. Got the exhaust to paint up. Front rear brakes, calipers, discs, uh, suspension, and all the other components. We've also got to paint up the wheels as well and decide on our colour, which we'll do a little bit later on. So quite a bit to get to, including a plate that covers the rear part of the suspension too. So this is the chassis. As you can see, it's going to be pretty awkward to mask off, but we can do it. It's going to take some time and careful preparation and spraying all in the correct order. So, cutting off the points, as always, going as close to we can without going right the way up to it. I'd rather let the sander do the work rather than cutting out chunks with the uh, cutters using the excellent Tamiya um, sprue cutters. Sanders, we're using a UMP 400 thinny stick, <coughs> the 240 thinny sponge, and our buffer as well. And there's a lot of clearing to do. Everything's got seam lines on both sides. So if it's round, we're using the sponge. If it's straight or edged, we're using the thinny stick. And it's just taking your time on all these curved surfaces to take that seam off without removing excess detail. So using the sander, once you're happy that the seam's gone, then coming in with the thinny buffer or the normal buffer and getting a high shine back on that plastic. So just take your time. Work your way methodically through. This took me three nights in total to do. There's a hell of a lot of cleanup on this car, and it took me quite a while to get through. So just take your time, and it's up to you how thorough you want to be. But as you can see, taking your time, it will pay off uh, in the end because you'll have much nicer looking parts, and the parts will look much, much prettier once sprayed up too. So that's the rear exhaust. Once you're happy, everything's cleaned up and sanded correctly. Get an old toothbrush. Get rid of all the dust and anything that's in all the recesses and crevices and give, keep it nice and clean. Now all the parts are cleaned up. We're going to mount them all now for primer. Uh, several different ways of mounting. This one is white tack. Anything that's flat or an edge you're not going to see or a surface, use a bit of white tack with a cocktail stick. That hold it absolutely perfectly. Anything has any holes underneath, they're going to be pressed into other places. If you cut the point of the cocktail stick, it should fit in there nice and snug, like so. So very, very handy when I like that. It makes things much, much quicker. Anything like brake discs, anything with a hole and it's too large for the cocktail stick, I will put a little bit of white tack on the back, push it through. And then on parts like the suspension where we've got other mounting points underneath, we use a crocodile clip on a cocktail stick. Grab the part, because that part's not going to be painted, it's going to be glued. You can hold the part and glue it in place. Makes life a little easier and a bit quicker. Now, anything that doesn't necessarily have a hole may have a locating point like this from part um, off the engine. 
So there's not quite a hole there, but there is a little tiny locating point. If we cut the very tip of the cocktail stick off, gently push it in and twist it, it will grab a hold of that part really nicely with enough pressure to safely paint it and it will be easy to remove later on. Now parts like this, anything again, half round, we can use the cocktail stick again, slide it down till it grips and there we go, job done, nice and easy. So there's our chassis ready to paint up, we need to prime everything first. There's all the components that are going to be sprayed, either metal colours or white. And these are all the parts that are going to be sprayed in semi-gloss black and grey. So we're going to prime twice here. We've got UMP Black Primer through the Apex with the 0.35 needle nozzle. We're going to use to prime this at the chassis and all the components that will be metal coloured. Uh, using black as the base makes the metal show through better, I think. So that's what I tend to do. Give the primer a really good shake. Make sure you've got some agitator balls in there too. And put a second enough in your airbrush to spray as required. So we're just going to clean it up. Give it a quick dust over. Make sure there's nothing on there. And then we're going to apply a nice light coat to begin with. And build it up heavier as we go. Very, very warm at the minute in the UK. So dry in light and fast, which is really handy. Literally by the time you get from one side to the other, the other side's virtually dry. So you can come back, make sure you get all the recesses right in those wheel arches, all the little crevices and angles and recesses to get even coverage. And you can see the first half we sprayed is already dry. So we can literally come straight back and put a second coat down, building up slowly as we go. Don't forget the front underneath as well, that needs spraying an X18 or semi-gloss black in a little bit. So just take your time, as you can see it is drying really rapidly. So we can come in and apply a second coat. Now, my camera, uh, it's the first time I've used it for spraying small parts and it is focused on the airbrush. I will take this into consideration for the next video and make sure the airbrush is a little bit further back as it's taking the camera off the part and painting a little bit. I do apologize, just one of those things. So there we go, that's the chassis all painted up. We're gonna prime the exhaust now. Again, apologies for the camera going out of focus. It's focused on the back of the airbrush and not the part. But again, we're just doing nice, light, thin coats. I do one all-round pass, nice and light. And then as we speed it up, we apply the second coat as we go. As you can see, sometimes some parts will fall off. So keep things at hand, clips, whatever you've got, other cocktail sticks, tweezers to make sure you can pick parts up and pop them back down. I'm just going to quickly whiz through prime everything like I said I prime it all once put it down by the time we come back around everything is nearly dried and then give it a second coat and carry on until we're done two coats use the UMP primers where I do and that's normally sufficient enough to get even coverage on everything and as you can see I am flying through these like you wouldn't believe now anything that's going to be sprayed black I like to try and prime in grey if possible um, the engine is different, it's going to be sprayed in uh, XF63, I believe it was, from Tamiya. Um, the reason I like to spray in grey is because black's hard to see on black. On grey it's nice and easy and you can make sure you get even coverage. But again, with the grey primer, nice thin coat to begin with. Make sure you get all the angles and recesses and areas. Get even coverage all the way around until you're happy. You've got a nice even coat. Put it down to dry for 10 minutes. Come back and apply a second coat. Goes down really well, sprays great. UMP Apex of 0.35 uh, needle nozzle, sprayed at about 30 psi. Goes down absolutely perfectly, and as you can see, whizzing round. Same again, one medium coat to begin with, and then we come back around for a second pass and give it a, a second coat. Two coats again is more than enough for this. As you see, the second one going up, touch wetter and then leave it to dry. I like to leave it to dry overnight if possible, just to make sure everything is perfect. Now, Tamiya LP5 is a new Tamiya lacquer paint, the semi-gloss black, it's absolutely beautiful. I've got it already mixed in a mixer bottle with some Mr. Level and Thinner at approximately 60, 40, 70, 30 roughly. And through the apex at about 15 PSI, it sprays absolutely beautiful. Nice light thin coat to begin with, and you can really lay this stuff down quite fast. Again, because it's quite warm, it's drying nice and quick at the minute. 
and I've literally gone over this virtually in one pass and as you see it's a pretty nice wet coat it lays down absolutely fantastic and it's by far the best semi-gloss black finish um, I've seen so far absolutely lovely so the chassis is done that's put down to dry for a bit and now we're on to some of the front suspension components again I do apologize for the parts not being in focus I'll rectify this in the next video obviously because I'm spraying I'm always looking at the camera and I didn't notice it was focusing on the airbrush so I'll move it forward next time to get the airbrush out of shot a little bit but it, nice even coverage it's going down well we're getting all the angles and it's absolutely beautiful paint it really is one of my favorites so there we go we've got uh, AK matte aluminium again we're about 15 psi this is an enamel paint uh, we're spraying up all the metallic parts there's quite a lot of them I'm just showing you a couple so nice even coat to begin with put it down let it dry for a bit come back and put on a little bit thicker this stuff you can literally hose on but I like to do two to three light coats Again, nice light pass to begin with, getting all the angles you can. Make sure you get the sides and underneath if needed on this. We don't really need to because it's only the top that can be seen. Put it down, let it dry, come back and do your second coat as required. Now we've got Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Gold and Super Titanium. We're going to mix these to the eye to get a nice gold coloured titanium. Um, it was calling for gold titanium, so I've just mixed a little bit of gold in that pot in front. Cannot remember the ratios, just did it by eye, and I mixed it 50 50 with Mr. Level and Thinner. And it gives a really nice titanium colour, just a hint of gold in there, which looks fantastic on these exhausts. Um, Mr. Obby Super Metallic Paint is beautiful paint, sprays absolutely fantastic, but it does need to be thinned correctly and sprayed right as well. Again, nice light coat to begin with. Put it to one side for a little bit, let it just off gas, you know, for a couple of minutes and then come back second, two, three coats normally on this. Just build it up lightly. It might look like I'm pulling a lot down, but I'm not. Most of it is missing, unfortunately. You do waste quite a bit of paint spraying parts like this. Uh, but again, it's absolutely beautiful stuff. Zero paint carbon ceramic grey now. So we're going to spray up the discs. They've been primed in black. Again, apologies for not being in focus. <laughs> it's going to be a theme in this video, unfortunately. Some of the paint spray is going to be out of shot. Uh, but we've got a nice, clean, crisp focus of the hairbrush cup there. So, as are all zero paints, nice light thin coats. Don't want to put any of this on wet. I have found, though, you can put this down a little bit heavier. It doesn't seem to react at all. It's got nice metallic flakes in it. I want it dry. It does kind of replicate the carbon look quite well. Uh, as you can see, it looks great in the colour cup. Uh, what it's spraying like on the brake disc, we haven't got much of an idea, but hey, at least we can see it. Now, masking, we've already sprayed the semi-gloss black, so we need to mask off now for the TS-17, um, which is the Tamiya uh, TS spray decanted through the apex. As you can see, we've masked that off ready, so we're going to spray that down. Once that's sprayed down and dried, we're going to mask off the stills, prime in UMP white, and then spray it the same vertigo blue we did the bodywork in. Engine's been sprayed in Tamiya XF63, uh, masked off in preparation for um, the black over the wheel arches, and we've sprayed the engine cover in XF2, and we're going to mask it off and spray black for the intakes and the um, airflow sensors. The discs have been sprayed in Zero Paint Brembro Red, so not this, calipers, sorry. Uh, four coats of that gave them a really nice colour. So while they're all nicely drying and off-gassing, we're going to detail paint some of the parts. So we've got some paints there. We've got the uh, black silver um, from Mr. Hobby. We've got Vallejo black and uh, model air silver as well. And we're going to use all these paints to brush paint, detail paint some of the smaller parts. So... If you wanted, you could take the time to mask these off. I did start to mask them off, and I just thought I'm going to be here all day. So we'll brush paint. Whenever brush paint, make sure your paint is thoroughly shaken. Put on a nice receptacle or bowl or whatever. I use our UMP paint pots for this. They work superb. Make sure your brush is nice and clean. And try and go over the paint as little as you can. The less brush strokes you put in there, the better finish you'll get. It's quite tricky on parts like this. Um, they do require some care and finesse and... Yeah, I'm not the best brush painter, but I do try. I would rather mask. I'm much better at airbrushing. But on parts like this, um, it's just it's just not viable to do. It takes far too long. And I think brush painting is the way to go. As long as you take your time, make sure the paint's properly thinned. 
The Vallejo Silver at the bottle is pretty decent, but like the black definitely needs a drop of water. And the uh, metallic black from Mr. Hobby we see in a minute needs a drop of Mr. Hobby leveling thinner to make it paint better. So that's all the silver parts done. Now we're going to apply some of the model color black. So a quick squirt into our UMP paint pot. We've got some water. I'm just going to put a drop in there. Makes a massive difference thinning it. Even if it is only a touch, it paints a lot better when thinned. If you mix using your brush like I did, it's a bit of a bad habit. Don't let the paint go over the ferrule, the metal part. It will dry in the bristles and make your brush splay out. So again, load the brush up, wipe it off, grab the part you need to paint, which for us is the rear differential. So we're basically doing the CV boot, uh, CV shaft boots. And as you see, I wiped off a bit of paint onto one of them, and then we come back and gently just detail paint. It's quite therapeutic brush painting. I don't do a massive amount, mainly just on uh, the running gear of the cars, to be honest. Um, but I do enjoy it. Uh, it's definitely a skill in its own. And like I say, the less brush strokes you can put in it, the better finish you will get. And definitely thin the paint. It does make a big, big difference. So quite a lot to do on this. There's about four or five different parts that need some brush painting in black, uh, including the strut brace. Um, it's been sprayed in titanium silver from Mr. Hobby. And then just the front part needs deep detail painting in black. And again, you can mask it if you wished, but some careful brush painting does do the job just as well. So another favourite colour of mine, I think it's H28, Mr. Hobby Aqueous, uh, metal black. I like to use this on drive shafts and other components that need a metallic colour that you know isn't black or silver. And again, Mr. Hobby level and thinner in the upturned cap of the paint. Holds a nice decent amount of paint. One quick drop in there. Again, give it a bit of a mix. Make sure you clean your brush thoroughly each time. I have a pot of UMP airbrush cleaner. I just dip the brush in and give it a real good clean. Wipe off any excess back into the uh, bottle. And we can come back and paint up any part you want to do. Like I say, I like to do the drive shafts just for a bit of difference. Um, I don't tend to go by the kick call outs for all the colours. I use a little bit of artistic license. And I like how it looks. And again, just methodically. All the way around, making sure you get everything covered. Don't get any of the surfaces you've just painted and try and keep it nice and neat. Now, the suspension, it called out for XF1 and X18. You could sit there and mask it or brush paint it. I like to use my Edding pen. So, this leaves a semi gloss finish. And to me, it's quite good for imitating coil springs. So, use the marker pen to hit the raised areas of the spring. And again, just take your time all the way around, and it does give a nice effect once dry. Like I say, you could mask it again, you could paint it, you could brush paint it. But for me, it's a component you can't really see all that well in the car anyway. But this gives it enough detail to make it look a bit more interesting. Now we've got my Loctite Super Glue Perfect Pen. I've been using this a lot lately for gluing parts. I find it very, very handy. Um, it will allow you to get paint, uh, paint, glue into the tightest of spots. Again, the camera is focused on my hand rather than the part. This is something we definitely need to rectify for the next video. Um, but as you can see, a couple of dabs here and there, making sure we've got the caliper the right way. Pop it in. Because it's a little bit thicker, it gives you quite a bit of working time. So if you're not happy, you can move things around. But as you can see, that carbon disc, we've also painted the center of the disc using a circle template over the top, spray through some semi-gloss black LP5 again into the center of the disc. And they're looking the part now, they're looking really good. Some decals applied to the disc now. We've got the Aston Martin name and logo to apply. Pop them in some water for a couple of minutes. Line them up where you wish. Obviously, use references. There's printed plenty of pictures on the real car out there. Now, it was a bit of a toss-up between red, yellow, or black. And I chose the red calipers. And I'm glad I did. They look a bit better. Get the decal on. Remove any excess moisture water from behind. Once you're happy where it is, hit it with some decal solution. That was the UMP Strong there. Let's sit those to one side to dry for a bit. And then we can come back and start assembling parts. So, polycap into the wheel hub. 
Go to the super glue from the perfect pen or precision pen, making sure our discs are orientated the right way. And again, pop them in place, leave them to one side to dry for a bit, and we're all good. Now we're going to speed this up now, fly through it because there's a lot to assemble. So we're going to pop some music on, sit back, enjoy it. If you don't want to, skip through, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, after all the parts are glued on, we're going to hit it with some Tamiya Panaline Wash. This is the black. We're just going to lightly apply it anywhere there's a seam or a join or a recess. Uh, let the capillary action carry it around, let it dry, wipe it off, and it'll leave a nice bit of depth to the detail already there on the kit. So just look for any recesses, panel lines, gaps, raised areas. You can add this. There's quite a bit on this, so... And all around the exhaust, all around the differential on the back, all around the various components built into the chassis. Now we've got two parts um, up above that need hand painting. I haven't done them in this video, but I will do them for the next one. Uh, they just need hand painting to replicate the exhaust where it goes through the chassis. Just a little bit further up when we just put that wash. And as you can see, pop a little bit on the chassis. And the capillary action carries it round. Now we've got some Mr. Surfacer Black. So this is Mr. Surfacer Primer. Uh, we're going to prime our wheels. Uh, we've sprayed three test colours of gunmetal. We've got AK Interactive. We've got TS42 Tamiya. I think it's TS38 Tamiya Dark Gunmetal. 
I've gone with TS42, the light gun metal. I think that's a tone I like the best out of the lot. So that's what we're going to use. So we're using the Mr. Service Prime because it's a little bit thinner than UMP. And it'll get into all these recesses using the UMP Apex with a 0.2mm needle nozzle conversion. So using the Mr. Service, we can get a nice light thin coat in there. As you can see, we're just applying it directly over the chrome. You could dechrome this should you wish. But I've used Mr. Service over the chrome parts before. No issues at all. And UMP primer, no issues whatsoever. Why am I using Mr. Service now? Well, I'm not biased to just UMP primer. I use several of the components, Tamiya primer, Mr. Surfacer. And on things like this, it's just the way I prefer to do it. There's no real reason why um, at all. It's just my preference to do it. Um, I do use a multitude of products that are not necessarily just UMP. Although I do often get accused of being biased. I'm not. I'm a modeler at heart. And I will use whatever products um, I find useful. Uh, applied in several thin coats. We're probably going to put two coats on this. So we're just going all around. It is lacquer base, so it does dry really quick. And here we are just coming in with our second coat. And again, we get all four angles of the wheel. So we come across, turning the wheels as we go. And then we'll come in, do circular motions all around the edge of the rim. Getting right to the centre and also inside the wheel too. This will ensure that when we spray the gun metal, it has got even coverage all around. And as you can see, they look really good. Now that's been left to dry for a few hours, and we're coming with our Mr. Uh, sorry, Tamiya TS42. We've thinned this a touch with Mr. Level and thinner to be decanted, left to off gas, and we've thinned it with Level and thinner about 10%. And we're on about our second coat here, again, all around all the different angles, getting inside as well, making sure to get even coverage all the way around. So we're happy. Two or three coats on this, allowing five to ten minutes in between should be sufficient enough to get coverage. And the colour you're left behind with, the Tammy Metallics lay down really well. The two take a couple of coats, including a, a pretty decent wet coat at the end to get them to look their best. As you can see, the colour's looking well. So I'm just going to give a light blast around the edge to the centre. That ensures that we've got all the angles from the side and the top. Put it to one side to dry for a couple of minutes. And then we can come back with our second coat. Again, making sure to get the inside. A little bit heavier on the second coat. And as we can see, they are looking fantastic now. Really nice gunmetal colour. And they are going to look the part. So... They've been allowed to dry for a couple of days now. And we're going to cut them off to sprue. And pop our tyres on as well. Now two different sets of tyres. There's wider ones for the rear. So make sure you get the correct wheels. Um, they're not branded unfortunately. But they are handed or sided. So make sure you refer to the instructions. To get them the correct way. They're a nice fit over the wheel. We've also added the centre caps. Uh, which I left chrome. Thought it gave a nice difference of colour. And we've added some panel line wash around the wheel nuts as well. So obviously getting your correct colours front, uh, correct wheels front and rear. Making sure to get the wider ones on the back. Using some gentle persuasion and a twist in action to get them in the poly caps. Making sure they're all the way in. There we go. As you can see the red calipers looking really well through there. Very, very happy with that. Line up so you can see the Aston Martin logo. And then we can do the other side. Again, take your time here. It's very, very easy to go all um, Hulk smash and literally rip everything off you're already glued in place. But if you just hold on to everything underneath and use a nice gentle twisting movement, it will pop in to the polycap. You can also put a bit of lubricant on there, should you wish, but I've found it never really needs it. Just take your time, pop it in, make sure it's fully all the way home. And there we go, there's the wheels in place. They're looking good, making sure they're all orientated correctly, which they are. Now, that wash we put in earlier, we're going to remove the excess now. So we've got some Windsor & Newton Sansodor, or Sans Odor, without smell. A little drop on there. And we're going to go underneath. And just gently rub off all the excess wash from around all the recesses, exhausts running gear all the differential and just hopefully leave all that nice wash 
in our detail areas and I'll highlight and accent everything really well and really look the part. Now you can come back and reapply it if you wish, if you take too much off. But normally for me, the one application is more than enough. Just make sure to remove the excess because it does look awful if you leave it on. As you can see on part of the exhaust at the back, we've got some nice recessed detail there. For me, once you've got the most of it off, spin it round, use the dry side of the cotton bud to wipe off all the excess. And there we go, it's looking the part. As you can see underneath as well, we've also sprayed our blue, the body colour, on the sills. That looks great too. The wheels are looking good, the disc and calipers are looking great through the rims. All the parts underneath look great, and I'm very happy with it. Right, there we go. As we can see, it's looking good. I'm very happy with those wheels, they look great. I'm very happy I chose that colour. I know other people chose that colour out there as well, which is great, but I did kind of have that colour a heart when I chose it. It's going to look great with the Vertigo Blue when it's done. So very happy with that. The rest of it's gone together great. Um, very happy with the colour choices. Very tricky and there was a lot of it, but it's done. So now we can move on to the interior next time in part ooh, where are we? Four. And then part five, we'll get it all finished and done and dusted. Something I did leave out of there and you might notice is missing on the engine cover to the Aston there is metallic writing and Tamiya gives you nice metallic transfers to put on there in which you cut around, you're supposed to peel it off the back end, put it on there, burnish it on, peel the back end off, job done, ponies fly away as unicorns, people dance around happy, it doesn't work or it wasn't for me anyway at all. I tried it on both sides, nowhere in the world, every time you peeled it up the letters came with it, I ended up with individual letters which were like a mill mill or two high i managed to get aston on one side kind of looking well thought right okay it's gonna take me a while i'll take the time put them all on no word of that i got them all on one side literally looked away a mouse farted in the corner i turned around and the door moved and i was like they just do not stick at all um so i made an executive decision to throw them in the bin well actually three of them blew away and the other two, uh, I think they're still stuck to me somewhere. Shocking, really bad, wouldn't go on. So they're not on there. There's not much I can do about it. It's just one of those things. So if anyone else has built it, let me know how you get on with those because they were a nightmare. Um, like I said, I did persevere and get them on individually. Trying to use two mil high letters with tweezers isn't easy and they just wouldn't stick. And I wasn't going to sit there trying to super glue things like that on. So they're gone. So if it's missing, uh, please understand why. The rest of it, not a problem at all, really great, and I really cannot wait to get this finished. Looking forward to doing the interior, and I just can't wait to get it all assembled and see it, because I think it's going to look fantastic, it really is. As to say, thanks for all the support out there, it's the reason I make these videos. Um, I will keep trying going with them, if I can, but obviously, you know, this is my hobby as well. And uh, While I enjoy doing the videos, it takes a lot of time up. It's literally 27 degrees today. In the UK it's a very nice warm day I want to go in the garden with my family and uh, I chose to spend the afternoon doing this which isn't a problem I was a little bit behind but you know there are other things in my life as well so understand that and don't start shouting out every time I show a kit can you video build it no I'll pick the kits we're going to video build and we'll go from there later on we'll start I've got, I've got another idea after the Mercedes of what to do I'll mention that next time um, but yeah, just please understand it is my hobby as well. And these videos are free at the end of the day. Um, but thanks to everybody that watches, the feedback you get, the comments everybody leaves. Thank you very much. As always, check out the old videos, the uh, 2K video and the primer and painting video we did the other day. Uh, we'll be back with part four very soon, hopefully in less than a week. Um, and yeah, we can really crack on and get this thing finished. So there we go. As always, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com. All the products I use in these videos is linked in the description. Click on it, it'll see to a post on ASM forum, and there's a 90 item list of everything I use and links to it. If I've used it in the video, go look on that list. It's probably in there as well. If you can see it on camera, it's more than likely there. Uh, anything that's missing, let me know. Check out umpretail.com. We sell a lot of our tools and products as well. Paul ASM Facebook page, where my work goes live, the bench page for the live show, and the offer hangout group as well. Subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up and go look at my other videos as well. There's weekly at the bench updates where I show my work and loads of reviews and stuff coming up as well. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching today. 
I'll catch you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.